Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how a game engine really works. So, so don't go nowhere. Just, just keep watching. You, you are going to learn something. I promise. Hey, uh, if we haven't met, my name is Jero Serrano, and I develop a 3D game engine completely from scratch. And I'm here to guess what? To help you build yours. So, what is a game engine? Well, a game engine is basically the tool that game developers use to uh, create, to develop the games that people love to play. Um, and how does a game engine make all this happen? Well, um, it is capable of making all of this uh, happen because of four main components uh, whose interaction uh, creates the graphical effects that you see on your game. And we are going to talk about these four main components. And we're going to start out talking about the rendering engine first. So the responsibility of the rendering engine is uh, to initialize the buffers uh, in the GPUs and also to initialize the proper shaders that your characters are going to need. Now I'm assuming you have no idea what is a buffer in the GPU and what is a shader. That's what I thought. So let me step back all the way to computer graphics 101 and let's start out talking about uh, what is a mesh. And a mesh is basically a collection of vertices and faces and edges that makes up the geometry of your character. For example, right now I'm showing you a character and I'm showing you the mesh uh, that compose the character. Um, and this is basically the data that we need to send to the GPU. More specifically, we need to send um, the vertices, uh, which is what I'm highlighting right now. And the vertices are basically used uh, to assemble the geometry uh, of the character on your screen. Um, next, we also need to send the normal vectors. And the normal vectors are perpendicular to the vertices, as you can tell, but they are also used to apply a lighting effect to your character. Um, and finally, the third set of data that we need to send are the UV coordinates. And the UV coordinates are used to apply a texture, an image uh, to the character. For example, right now, um, you can see that I have not applied an image to the character, but now I'm going to apply it. And I'm able to apply it because I'm using the UV coordinates uh, to help map the image onto the character. So all of this uh, three set of data is known as an attribute. And this is what we send to the GPU. However, the GPU cannot do much with only an attribute. Uh, we need more than that. The GPU requires the space coordinate. Um, and the space coordinate basically defines the position of an object. So to be able to uh, properly position a character on the screen, the GPU is going to require the object space, the world space, the camera or view space, and the model view projection space. And let me show you what they are. All right, so here I have my character and I'm gonna talk about the different spaces that we need to send to the GPU. And I'm gonna start out talking about the object or the model space. Um, in the object space, uh, the vertices uh, uh, making up the mesh are defined relatively to the mesh origins point, usually uh, zero, zero, zero. Next, we have the world space. And in the world space, uh, the position of my character is defined relatively to the origin point of the world. In this case, my character is position five units uh, along the X direction. And next we have the view or the camera space. And in this instance, the world position is defined relatively to the origin of the camera. And finally, we have the model view projection space. Uh, and it is usually calculated by the GPU and it is what we end up seeing when we are looking at a video game. So now you may be asking, how do we send these space coordinates to the GPU? Well. I'm glad you asked because this is where we used a linear algebra. Basically, we send this data using a four by four matrix and um, three by three matrix that I'm highlighting right now uh, controls the rotation of your character. Whereas the rightmost column of the four by four matrix controls the position of your character. 
Now these space coordinates that we sent to the GPU are sent as uniforms to the GPU. So basically, once your GPU has attribute data and uniform data, your GPU can now render a character on your screen. But how does that happen? You know, what happens inside the GPU? What happens with this data once it reaches the GPU? Well, inside the GPU, we have a graphics pipeline and the graphics pipeline is basically uh, the different stages that your data uh, goes through before it reaches the frame buffer or the screen uh, on your TV. Now inside the pipeline, we have two main components that you need to understand, and they are known as shaders. Um, we have the vertex shader uh, and the fragment shader. Uh, basically, the shaders are GPU programs that you uh, write uh, code for using um, a shading language. And in essence, the vertex shader uh, manipulates or controls uh, the space transformation of the character, whereas the fragment shader controls the color of the pixel of your character. Uh, basically, it controls or manipulates the graphical effects that you see. Now, I don't want to lose you, so let me recap uh, something really quick. We have the attributes, we have the uniforms, and this is the data that we send to the GPU. Now, in the GPU, uh, the shaders, the vertex and the fragment shader, uh, they manipulate the data and render your character on the screen. Now, how do we send the uh, data, you know, the attributes and the uh, uniforms to the GPU? How, how do we send that data? Well, that is when we use uh, OpenGL or we use Metal or we use Vulkan. Basically, uh, OpenGL and Metal are a, a library, an API whose purpose is to send data from the CPU to the GPU and they help uh, you uh, initialize the buffers and uh, initialize the shaders and do all of those uh, complicated stuff that is required to render a character. Now remember how I told you that you actually can uh, write code for the shaders for the vertex and the fragment shader? Well, you are given that freedom because um, not every character is going to require the same type of uh, graphical manipulation. For example, um, the mountains that I have here in my game scene, um, they are going to require a different set of shaders than my character that is moving. Why? Well, because my character is going to require extra set of attribute data and, next, and a different set of uh, code to create the walking animation. And that is where the rendering engine comes into play. See, the rendering engine manages the different type of shaders uh, and the different type of attribute data and uniform data that different set of characters in the game requires. In essence, it just manages uh, the communication and the data that is sent to the GPU. That is the purpose of the rendering manager. So, oh, I'm sorry, of the rendering uh, uh, engine. All right, so now that we know what the rendering engine does, now let's talk about the physics engine. And the physics engine basically um, integrates the equation of motion. What the heck? I know you probably forgot physics when you, or probably you hated it when you were in college. But basically, this is what it does. Your physics engine will take a force uh, such as gravity and will compute the final velocity and the final um, position for the character. That's all what it does. It will integrate the equation of motion using uh, numerical techniques such as uh, the Runge-Kuda or the Euler method. And in essence, once you apply a force and the physics engine computes the velocity and the final position, that final position uh, is uh, given to the GPU as the model space. Remember when I talk about the four by four matrix and how we um, can manipulate the position of the character by um, by changing the values in the um, in the column of the four by four matrix. Well, that is what we are actually manipulating. We get the force, we compute the velocity, we get the position, and that data is sent to the GPU as the model space uh, coordinate. And that will create the illusion that your character is 
either falling because of gravity or is moving because of uh, the joystick. For example, if I use my joystick right now um, and I move the character, I'm essentially applying a force to the character and the uh, physics engine is integrating uh, the equation of motion to compute the final displacement, which is shown on the screen right now. You see, there was no reason why to get nervous because I said physics. Um, that's all what the physics engine does. It simply integrates the equation of motion. Uh, however, aside from that, the physics engine also uh, communicates with the collision detection system. And that is what I want to talk about right now. So, oh my gosh, the collision detection system is it's going to give you a headache. Uh, it is simple to understand, but it's insanely complicated to implement. All right. So let me give you a brief summary of how this works. Basically, um, the collision detection system is responsible for three things. It needs to uh, detect if a collision happened. It needs to compute where the collision occurred. And it needs to calculate a collision response. Now, to detect if a collision happened uh, is quite expensive. So what the um, collision detection system does is, uh, um, is that it divides the process into two different stages. During the first stage, um, what happens is that, is that the whole game scene gets parsed and um, every game character gets uh, wrapped uh, with a spherical bounding volume. And a simple test is done uh, during this first stage. Basically, um, all of the spheres that are most likely to collide are tested. And if they are colliding, uh, then they are sent to the second stage. And in the second stage, um, the characters are wrapped with a convex whole volume. And a more complicated uh, algorithm is uh, used to determine if the characters are actually colliding. And if they are colliding, well, that is where we, uh, well, I'm sorry, that is where the collision detection system um, determines where the collision occurred. And once we have that, the collision system then determines the collision response. And the collision response basically computes uh, a force um, that will repel uh, the characters to move in the opposite direction, um, such as what you see here on the screen. Again, that force will be integrated by the physics engine uh, and then sent to the GPU uh, and create the illusion that the characters are uh, colliding. Um, and that's basically what a collision detection system does. And finally, we have the mathematics engine. And this is one of the most important components uh, of a game engine because it provides all of the linear algebra operations that your rendering engine requires. Uh, it also um, provides all of the numerical integration um, techniques um, that your physics engine is going to use. And it provides to the collision system all of that geometric uh, test that it uh, uses in order to determine if if a character if two characters are colliding and basically these are the four components that make up a game engine the rendering engine the physics engine the collision detection system and the mathematics engine and their interaction among them is what makes a game possible all right guys i hope this video was helpful i hope you learned something um and if if you want to know more about game engine development, I actually uh, posted several videos uh, about a week ago, um, which you can find over here or probably over here somewhere, <laughs> uh, which should help you um, in case you want to know more about um, how to become an indie game engine developer or if you want to get some uh, tips and advice on how to develop a game engine. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Um, I like to share 
uh, everything that I know about game engine development. So I usually write on my website, I write articles, and now I'm you know doing YouTube videos. And so subscribe, so that way you can get notified whenever I post a new video. All right, guys, thank you so much. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.